Hi! Today we're going to look at some of the things you can do to enhance the type in your images while keeping it live. I have a picture of a maple tree and I've put some type on top of it in a typeface called Rebecca. As you can see here in the layers panel, that is live type. Whenever you have a layer thumbnail like this that's white with a T on it, you have live type and you can edit it. Now the first and easiest thing we can do is add a layer style. This is one of the default styles that's been shipped with Photoshop ever since styles came out, so let's use this one because I know you've got it. Make sure the type layer is selected and then just click the button and that puts the layer style on the type. Now that's not what I expected it to look like. Here in the thumbnail it looks like it's red with a yellow dot in the middle of it and here on the image it looks like it's mostly blue with a red dot in the middle of it. So let's double click on the gradient overlay and see what's going on. Now it's radial, I knew that because it's got a circle in the middle of it. Let's see if we can change the scale and no. The largest we can make it is 150% and that's not nearly big enough. Let's uh, move this back and let's unreverse it. No, that makes it mostly yellow and red and I wanted it mostly to be red. So let's change the style from radial to linear and that gives me some more what I wanted. I'm going to change the angle just a little bit so that it's not exactly straight up and down. And um, I think I want more of the yellow and less of the blue, so I'm going to click right on the image and drag. When I do that, I can position the gradient wherever I want it. I can just move it along wherever I'd like to have it. So let's put it about there. But you know that yellow is too green of a yellow for my taste. So I'm going to click right on the gradient and that opens the gradient editor. Then I can click on the color stop over here and that opens up the color for the color stop and if I click on this swatch then I can open up my color picker and I can change it so it's more of a goldenrod and less of a Hansa yellow. Click OK and OK and that's the color that I wanted. That looks pretty good. Let's look at the bevel and emboss. So I'm not really sure I like that one. Let's change the technique to chisel hard to start with. That's better but it's a little bit big. Let's change the size to 11 pixels. We'll just type that right in there. And let's add a contour. Now I can do that by just clicking on the name contour here and that not only enables it but it opens up the contour pane so that I can choose the kind of contour that I want. The contour is the profile of your bevel, the kind of thing that you would do if you were making it with a router or something. Right now it's straight but there are a lot of different ones that you can choose from and as you can see when you click on the presets it updates over here on your picture so you can see it in live time. And if there's nothing in the presets that you like, you can click right on the button and that opens up the contour editor. And here you can click on the line to add points. And if you have a point that you don't like, you can click on it and drag it off the line to make it go away. And you can position the points, of course, wherever you would like to position them. If you have one that you'd like to make into a corner point, make sure it's selected. It's black if it's selected and just click the corner box here to enable the corner point and you can get corner points and anything that you do updates in live time over here on your image. See if I move that you can see how it's changing um, in live time. And when you like what you've got you could save it if you wanted to. You can load the contours that you've made that you've already saved or you can just click OK and just use it for this one image and that's what we're going to do. So OK, there's that. I think it looks pretty good. We'll just click OK and we'll just save it like that. Yeah. No. That's awfully bright. Let's turn off the gradient overlay and just have the white text. And let's make the text kind of ghosted so that we can see the trees through it. Now if we change the opacity, drag it down, notice that we're also reducing the opacity of the layer style. I'd like the layer style to remain good and strong but just change the opacity of the white in the middle. So to do that, I just drag on the fill and reduce the opacity of the fill instead of reducing the opacity of the entire layer. And that way I can get pretty much what I want. But you know, now that I've done that I can see that this particular font really doesn't have as much white as I would like. So since I have the font tool enabled and I have a text layer chosen, as long as I don't select any actual letters, anything that I do will change all of the text on that layer. And in fact I can change the text on several layers at once by selecting all of them. So let's click here in the font family text box and I'll just change this to Gil Sans Ultra Bold. Notice how it sort of was anticipating what I was typing. It'll do that so if you have a really long font list, which I do, you can get the one you want fairly easily. 
then just tap enter and I've got it except it has lowercase letters in it. I didn't want lowercase. Rebecca didn't have them so I didn't notice that it was typed in lowercase but this one does so to change that we'll just go to the character panel and click on the all caps button and that changes it to all caps without having to retype anything. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, no. Instead of having it ghosted, let's make it inverted. Yeah, that would look good. So I'm going to change the fill back to 100%. And um, I can't just invert it because if I do that, I'll go over here to Image, Adjustments. Notice that Invert is dimmed. You can't invert a type layer. What I can do is duplicate the background layer. So I'm going to select the background layer and then hold down the command key, control on a PC, and tap J to duplicate it. I can drag this above the text layer, and now if I hold down the option key, that's Alt on the PC, and click between the two of them, I can put the photograph inside the text. Now it looks like all I've done is make the text clear, but if I hide this layer, you can see that no, what I've done is put the photograph right inside my letters. How cool is that? And now that I've done that, I can hold down the command key, that's control on a PC, and tap I to invert it. And I've inverted my text, and yeah, no. Let's try putting a whole different picture in there. Let's get this weathered plank. I'm going to type V to get the move tool, and then I can drag the plank on top of the tab, and when it changes back to the other picture, I'll hold down the shift key and let go, and that puts my layer from the other image on this image, even though I'm using tabs. And then since I still have the move tool, I can just move it around and position it where I want and um, put the knot holes where I'd like them to be in this image. And that looks good. Maybe it would look even better if instead of being a photograph, it was a sketch. Let's use a sketch filter. So I'm going to hold down the option key, that's Alt on a PC, and drag down to make a copy. That co way the copy will already be clipped. If I dragged up, then I would make a copy that was not clipped and I'd have to clip it. So I'm going to undo that. And then with the weathered plank selected, I'm just going to go to Filter, Sketch, and let's try Conte Crayon. No. Let's try Graphic Pen. When you're in this great big dialog box, you can change which filter you're using from any of the ones that are here on the fly, just like that. Now if you look here, you'll notice that what I have is a very dark blue and white. These were the background and foreground colors in my color swatches. So if you want to use different colors, just change your colors in your color swatches before you begin. Click OK, and there we go, a kind of a sketch on top of the um, text. And that looks pretty good, so we're going to leave it like that. The best thing to remember is that this type is still live. I can type anything I want to in here, and it changes it and I still keep all of my effects and everything else. If I disable these two layers, you can see that nothing has changed. It's all still lined up exactly the way that it should be. And um, that's as easy as that is. There is a lot more that we can do with this, and we're going to be doing more, but not right now because we're out of time. So until next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.